with those triple double numbers. No question Scoring about just it. Part of that story. And Victor Oladipo leading the surging Indiana Pacers, who have won six in a row and are rolling on the road against the Raptors. Welcome to the Auto Trader pregame show. Dennis Scott, Mike Patello here with you this evening. I'm that other guy, Chris <laughs> Miles. We're here to get you ready for a double dose of those dinosaurs. They played here last night. Playing here again. Kawhi Leonard is out. Kyle Lowry is in for tonight's game against the Indiana Pacers. Miles Turner out for Indiana as well. That game is tipping off at 7.30. It's only fitting that Toronto faces the team with the third best record in the East to finish a week full of big tests. To start you out, earlier this week, Toronto started against the Stifle Tower and Donovan Mitchell. Kawhi Leonard scored a career-high 45 points to start the week with that victory. Then Thursday night, Kawhi Leonard, Danny Green returned to San Antonio for the first time since being traded to Toronto. Kawhi got booed. Danny Green received applause. The former team spread it out to a 19-point lead, and the Raptors lost by 18 to those surging Spurs. And as seen right here on NBA TV, the Raptors bounced back on Saturday night against Milwaukee. Toronto used a 15-2 run in the fourth quarter, get their first win in three tries this season against the Bucks. Here's Raptors head coach Nick Nurse on his two stars, Kawhi Leonard and Kyle Lowry. What uh, went into the decision to sit Kawhi out tonight? Yeah, uh, just just uh, resting him after a heavy heavy week, and uh, I think it's just the best thing to do. Will you have Kyle back tonight? Kyle is back. You've had a million different lineups, a bunch of guys in and out of the lineup, but you've had Kyle or Kawhi in every single game. Is that coincidence, luck, or is it easier <laughs> to rest one when the other one's playing? Um, it's luck. I'm not sure if it's good or bad <laughs> luck. No, it, it's just coincidence, really. And, uh, um, you know, it's it's kind of goes with the territory, especially for us this year. We just got to get here every day and see who's, see who's healthy and ready to go and then start figuring out what we're going to do. So, Zar, Kawhi has rested the second night of back-to-backs all season. He's out again tonight. You think the Raptors will take this approach for the rest of the regular season? I wouldn't be surprised if they did. Reason being, they actually only have four remaining back-to-back. So they've done it this far, and the whole thing is based on we know we're going to be in the playoffs. We know we're going to be a high seed. Why take a chance and hurt our main guy by playing him in a game that we really shouldn't be playing him in? Remember, last year he played, what, nine total games last year, now he comes back this year, and they started out slowly with him. But they would like to get to the point where they feel comfortable. But remember, nowadays, it's not just one guy making the decision anymore. Mm -hmm. You're talking about agents, players, doctors, GMs, Mm -hmm. a lot of people involved in decision-making. Including the head coach named Nurse. Now, who comes back? Kyle Lowry, a guy who's missed the last six games. Look, this team has been playing well without him. But with Kawhi Leonard out of the lineup, you heard Nick Nurse say, hey, it's good to have one or the other back uh, in that lineup. Yeah, you want to have one or your two best players out there at all times, but obviously the injury bug has been there for both guys all season long. But to go back with Kawhi Leonard real quick, guys, it's now in later. It's now because you want to make sure he stays healthy for the playoffs, and it's also later, Coach, because you want to make all the right moves to keep this man happy because you know this summer you have to have another conversation with him to make sure he stays. So that's why it's like the old candy is now in his later to make sure everything stays sweet. You know, Lowry returning is really important to them because even though he's missed 11 games thus far this season, six in a row coming into tonight, Remember, this guy's still second in the NBA in assists per game, right? Almost at 10, okay, the 10 mark. Then he's also listed free throw percentage, steals, minutes per game. This guy's really important to this team. All right, let's take a look now at the Dodge road trip ahead. And by that, we mean the Pacers started off their time away from Indiana Friday night with a win over Chicago. They've won six in a row. The last team to beat Indiana the Toronto Raptors. 3D, this team is finding ways to get victories even when Victor Oladipo scores less. They're now 8-1 and one when Oladipo plays and scores less than 16 points. What does that tell you about the rest of this group and their evolution? Well, it tells me that uh, Nate McMillan, coach, has done a heck of a job 
getting these guys in winning situations and having them feel confident. So when their best player is out, they say, okay, we'll adjust a few things. We continue to share the basketball. We may run our offense through someone differently, but one thing stays cons uh, consistent. We play hard every night. And that's one thing you can never take sure about Nate McMillan, coach, make sure this team plays hard every night. One similarity between both teams, they both have great depth. So when you're missing a key guy, they have somebody there to step up and take his place. And that's the opportunity for that guy to shine and they need to take advantage of that. And Oladipo did have a great scoring output against the Bulls and stepped up. So even in situations where they need him to score, he can get back to that the way he played last year. And that's what's so much fun when you're watching Oladipo play because now he's proven to us now back-to-back -back years he can get to the basket whenever he wants to. He still gets to the free throw line. But to your point, Chris, he can give you that outburst of 40, but he doesn't need to every night. To your point, Coach, where the team is so deep now where he can have a pedestrian 18 or 19, and then the rest of those guys, Turner, the rest of those guys score points to kind of hold down the fort. So deep team, understanding who they are, but they play hard every night. That's why I'm not surprised at this team anymore. Not surprising at all to see the Raptors and the Pacers both near the top of the standings in the Eastern Conference because of what they bring to the table defensively. So many different players that are versatile on that end of the floor. How is Indiana able to do that with their talent? Both teams are good defensively. Indiana is better. This is the number one team in the NBA at opponents' points per game, number three in opponents' field goal percentage. And why not take a look at how they play that defense. A little bit different, a little more unorthodox. Let's watch now in transition. There's the big man, communication. I got back. Now, why would you take the ball at the number one shot blocker in the NBA like that and let him block it and at the other end, an easy fast break layup? Watch the big man help. Sabonis stays with the ball. Oladipo anticipates that the crossover is coming. He reaches in from behind. I think you like getting buckets like this where he's out in front and he's a guy who can finish. Again, on the sideline, this is what I said about being unorthodox. How many teams do you see trap the ball, use the sideline as another defender, Sabonis anticipates, rotates over, comes up with the steal, and then once again, they're off on offense at the other end of the floor. So this is a very aggressive defense. It's a defense that has the offense on its heels that time, trying to anticipate. Remember, steals are huge for them to get out in fast breaks. Certainly an exciting game we're going to see tonight between the Toronto Raptors and the Indiana Pacers tipping off just after 7.30. We've already had a full afternoon of action. The T-Wolves bringing it to the Lakers. Ooh. Mm. Ooh, cat. Meow. Oh, that other team <laughs> in L.A., the Clippers, bringing it to Orlando. Montrez Harrell uh, apparently attacking the rim, the theme for tonight. And how about the Brooklyn Nets? Yes, one of the hottest teams in the league looking to win their 12th game in 15 tries. Down to three, down to two, it's a three. Good! Good! He got it! James Harden, a flamethrower! Incredible shot! Indeed it was, but check out this incredible quote from Daryl Morey. The Rockets GM says James Harden is the best offensive player of all time. What about Kareem, Michael, Kobe, guys like that? Brendan, is that hyperbole to say that James Harden is the greatest offensive <clears throat> player of all time? I think it would be a better quote if you said he's the best offensive player of maybe this season, or maybe he's the best offensive player of this range of this time period. But all time, I think it's very hard when you talk about what Kareem Abdul-Jabbar was able to do, when you talk about what Michael Jordan was able to do. These guys were, Mike, especially Mike, he had plenty of seasons where he was over 30 points per game, between 30 and 35 points, and shooting incredible percentages along the way. I think from a one-on-one -on -one standpoint, when you look how physical the game was back in the day, Michael Jordan, to me, is still the best individual offensive player of all time. And if you put him in today's game where you couldn't touch him, I think that he would be even better. And it's hard to imagine Mike being even better, but he played through the bad boy Pistons and those Nick teams that were really, really physical. You can't touch people now. He would have lived at the free throw line also, and he would have been able to get his game off in the mid post. I think the most accurate version of that quote may have been, he has been put in position to be the most prolific offensive player in the regular season. And I, I think that's possible. Mm. 
I think you could argue that. I think there are a lot of different statistical metrics you could use to say he has been put in position to be the most prolific. But to say you're the best offensive player of all time, like you said, if I take Michael Jordan, I put him in this era, and I tell him to do the things that they're asking James Harden to do, it's possible he grows and evolves into doing that at an altogether different level. You just don't know. But I certainly think he's been put in position. He's been really empowered, frankly, to take what used to look like horrifically bad shots. Mike D'Antoni is very comfortable with him taking those shots. And because they're running their entire offense through him, he goes 17, 18 seconds on the shot clock and then goes to a step back three by the numbers, he only has to make a certain number of those to be the most prolific and efficient offensive player. That's fact. It's not a lot of fun to watch. He's whoa, awfully, whoa, awfully. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> oh, let's start Time the debate. Out, Griff. We are not gonna, I'm not going <laughs> to let you come up here and slander James Harden's No game. slander. No Look, slander. Saying it's not fun to watch. James Harden, you watched that Golden State game. That wasn't fun to watch. James Harden was hitting crossover, step back. He crossed Clay over, gave him the little slap on the butt, hit the shot on Draymond. He, listen, he's making such great individual moves. I can't say that. I understand he goes to the free throw line a lot. I understand his usage is very high. But guess what? With Chris Paul out, I don't think I want Daniel House creating shots for himself. So I think I, I love what he's doing, and I think it's exciting. So for me, I'm not trying to slander him at all. I, I think what he's done has been mind-numbing. And it, it's a mea culpa on my part for not appreciating him enough before this run. It really is. It's remarkable. I don't like watching someone go dibble, oh, dribble tantrum Griff. for 18 seconds. I don't. Oh, I like the ball to move. I like the game when it's symmetry in motion. I like it when it's the floor spread and the ball hums around. Now, look, the reality is most of the best players in this league play a very similar, similar way to James. It's just that they don't have the ability to take and make difficult shots like he does, so they have to draw and kick which then starts the ball moving around. I've got a question for you. So I'm, I'm, I'm holding him responsible for the fact that he can actually make shots that other people don't get to take. What does Steph Curry look like if he's not playing with other players who demand the ball and demand movement? Steph Curry can take and make almost all of those same shots. But he's not playing that way. And I would rather watch that product personally. And I think that uh, Steph Curry can play a different way and he can play a different style because he gets absolute spacing when you talk about Clay Thompson and when you talk about those other players out there, Kevin Durant, he doesn't have to play that way. James has to play that way. Similar, my question was, when you say you don't like James Harden's style playing that way, it's the exact same style LeBron James had last year when they went to the finals. Right, but Guess he's what? strong and kicking. But, but who else was, was LeBron, was LeBron going to let Jordan Clarkson take him to the playoffs? No, that's a, that is a recipe. Totally get it. That is a recipe for failure. I think that James Harden, he does have high usage, but guess what? I think a lot of guys have high usage in this league, and when you look at Houston's team, especially right now with what they have with Chris Paul being out, I think he has to play like this, and I love seeing it, and it's been successful. We just saw LeBron, we just saw LeBron go to the finals last year basically with him and four rocks start. <laughs> it's a true story. Well, you mentioned that success. It's been 12 games of it, and what a run it's been for James Harden. 40 points a night over Big the game, last James. 12 games. I got you back, James. 40 points in each of the last five games. Listen to the names on that list. Jordan, Kobe, AI. Those are the only other players to do it in the last 50 years. Are they good? Those names sound like good names. I think they're historically good. They're so pretty good. will that streak extend to six games tonight? Brendan. I'm saying yes. I'm going over. I'm going over. I think James is on a run. I think, once again, the usage is high. He's hot right now. He's incredibly confident. And there's not a, really a player on Portland's team that I worry about defensively that can get into James and, fo and force him to do something that he doesn't want to do or make him uncomfortable. So I think James goes over 40 tonight. I'm going to go with the under. And the reason you is... Would, <laughs> 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 hey, 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 hey. I'm going to go with the under. And the reason is, for me personally, I just look at that list... I look at the names on that list. I look at how many times he's done it, and I'm going to go for regression to the mean. He's due to have a regular superstar kind of night where he gets 34. Okay. Maybe we should save this for later tonight and see who came out on, on top with their prediction. You okay. See, you seen trading movie trading places? <laughs> gentlemen's, one, gen, gentlemen's bet. One one dollar. Winthorpe. <laughs> Placed at 7:10 p.m. Warriors also.